And okay. we are recording. Welcome to, uh, to everyone. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meetings law, uh, GLC 30A subsection 18, this meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted by, by a remote participation. Um, I want to do a roll call for ACOA committee members. And this is a good time, of course, for you to check your audio and, and unmute when you uh, indicate your presence. Um, hold on here. Let me get my list, which was somewhere here. Okay, well, we'll just, uh, let's see, I don't, oh, here we go. All right, okay. So, um, Sue, Sue Dirks? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Chad Fuller? Present. All right. Rosemary Koffler? Here. Monta, um, Mila Montemayor? I'm here. Mm -hmm. Tim Neal. I'm here. I have quick two quick comments while I'm on the floor here. One, could someone, Mary Beth or whoever has that, send us the latest committee members with the addresses and emails? I seem to have an old one. That would be great. And if Dor I did not realize Dorothy is a liaison through the town council, maybe we could put that her on that sort of list of individuals associated with us, that would be great. Sure. Uh, and then the second, I just want to compliment everybody on their uh, less than woolly sweaters today. That's great. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> yes, right. thank you. Okay, thanks. That was a rich and full uh, statement of your presence with us. Um, um, Yvette Palacine. Here. Oh, hello, Yvette. Hello, Pat and everybody. And myself is and Jacqueline Smith Crooks. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, we see you. We are so excited to see your smiling face, uh, Jacqueline. Okay, that's fabulous. And we also have some guests, which we will melt, which will be who will be welcomed uh, more fully. Is there anybody else on the phone who is participating uh, as a guest? Uh, uh, um, if you would just hold on just one moment, we do have one attendee, Caroline Letterman from Amherst Neighbors, and I am putting her into our panelist. And if she wanted to. Um, she is uh, a president of the Amherst Neighbors, and you're free if you would like to unmute yeah. Caroline. Hello, go. everybody. Good Hi. to be here. Hello, I was stuck Caroline. in the audience for a minute, and I didn't, I didn't know how to get out of it. But here I am. So thank you, Mary Beth. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Thanks for joining. That, that's yeah. excellent, and I look also look forward to meeting uh, you and Marina. Uh, in person when that's possible, but chatting by phone, I would love uh, to follow up with you uh, uh, in the days ahead because uh, I appreciate, I respect and appreciate the work that you are doing and your presence here uh, today. Um, so it, that's just terrific. Um, okay, so we have, um, <coughs> let's see, I just, make, let me just review. Um, I just want to, this is a housekeeping rule, uh, just encourage you to mute uh, be, uh, when you're not speaking uh, because it cuts down on background noise. Um, and, but it's also possible just in terms of your participation, anyone's participation, um, you can raise your hand electronically if you have, if you know how to do that. But we are, we're kind of old school in some ways. We often just raise our hand and find that that's very effective. So both Mary Beth and I are watching the screen um, at all times to look for that. So, um, all right. So um, uh, a few of you had had some difficulty getting in. We're working, I'm working with Angela Mills. Um, on figuring out uh, how we can smooth that process. So I apologize for that and appreciate your patience. Um, 
this is a time for public comment um, at the beginning of their meeting. So um, if there's any, any uh, residents of Amherst are welcome to express their views up to three minutes and the board will not engage in dialogue or comment on a matter that any matter that comes before us at that time. Is there anyone on, on There is somebody, Pat, so I'm going to, I'm asking them, um, Pat Brinkman is listed as an attendee and I've just sent a note to, uh, to allow them to talk and ask them to unmute. And if there's something that they would like to say during this portion. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Pat. I'm a new resident to Amherst, and I was always involved in the Council on Aging in the town where I came from, which is Lincoln, Massachusetts. Wonderful. <laughs> and I'm interested in a number of things, and personally, I'm interested right now in uh, the availability of loaning. When I left Lincoln, I donated all of my mobility aids, walkers, picker-uppers, sock putter honors, all of that to the Council on Aging. And I'm wondering when that service is going to be available again at the Council on Aging. And I'll just take everything offline. I'm basically here also to listen. So thank you. That's good. Thank you very much. Any others? There are no other attendees. OK, all righty. So um, we have a full agenda. And I promised Angela that, uh, that uh, we would uh, do our best to end at 1030 as is our practice because she has a, a back, some back-to-back -back, uh, uh, um, um, Zoom meetings that she manages. So, um, so um, <clears throat> the first, we'll, we'll move to the first agenda item, which was is uh, post-pandemic planning. And um, um, one of the things that, um, that in conversation um, uh, that we, as, as things are opening up uh, as a result of, of the vaccine uh, efficacy and, um, and we're looking, beginning to imagine a, a different kind of freer uh, future. Um, I had as formulated some questions, some lingering questions um, uh, to, um, uh, to Emma Dragon, who's the Director of Health uh, um, in, um, in Amherst. Um, and she was uh, unfortunately not able to attend, but she did respond to us. And if you've had a chance to look at the questions that I posed to her, um, I know I continue, I'm sure Mary Beth has heard this question over and over again, when will the you know, when will the bank center be open when we're um, uh, for, to, to the senior center and participation? In other words, when, when will things uh, uh, return to some semblance of order? Um, and so I wanted, <clears throat> she did respond, however, um, and I wanted to give each of any of, any of you a chance to um, comment on uh, her response and also to inquire whether you think that there are other questions that we should be asking her. So um, that's, that's what this, this particular, what we can do with this portion of the agenda. So any, any comments or observations from, from anyone, any of them, any, any members? Okay, so one of the things I will make, I'll make a comment then. One of the things that I noticed, um, uh, one, of, uh, the, I, one of the questions I had was, was curious about the possibility, possibilities for outdoor settings. Um, and Mary Beth and I discussed that a little bit. And Mary Beth, do you wanna just share a little bit about that piece for us? Yeah, I, I'd be happy to. So I, I, what I would preface it to say that uh, we have shifted really are, are a great deal of focus towards reopening and what that might look like. Uh, there are no clear directives from the Massachusetts Council on Aging nor the state around the safety precautions that would be necessary uh, to effectuate that. Um, also in speaking to the health director, um, this even this morning, 
uh, we were chatting about the CDC guidelines around individuals who've been vaccinated, can they gather unmasked? And she, she, what she clarified for me is that that CDC guidance has not been adopted by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So I think that there are some layers of policy coming both from the state and locally that need to be uh, refined before we could understand the full dynamic. However, that being said, um, you know, we are examining the possibility of getting a tent or two to facilitate some sheltered areas where we can do outdoor programming. Um, also, we have been looking around at the space, though uh, we operate the vaccine clinic here that's in that on that first floor, but that still leaves us the senior center proper, which has two areas, both for socializing and also gathering groups in the computer room and also the entire third floor. So this afternoon I'm going through uh, with some individuals from town staff to look at the third floor and to see if there might be even just temporary usage. Um, I would, I would suggest that anything that we do, of course, like safety would be the primary focus, but uh, safety has to also encompass um, a way in which we can begin to, to work with the deterioration, both in cognitive uh, decline and also in physical health. So bringing people together is critical to public health as well as the other things that we are endeavoring to do, which is vaccinating people, et cetera. So what I anticipate broadly is that there would be a soft opening of some small gatherings, both outdoors, possibly indoors for uh, small amounts of time under certain safety um, restrictions. But we are gun ho in that endeavor and to already talking to a number of instructors about their willingness to teach outdoors and what we could bring um, you know, every, our Zumba instructors already been in touch with me, yoga, you know, a whole, whole bunch of things. So I just want to assure you that we are focused on it. And I think as the policies develop, we're going to be ushering that in. And I, if anyone has any other questions about that, I'm, I'm happy to respond. Okay, I see Rosemary. Well, I did have a question about the third floor, and I wondered if that was going to be used um, by the senior center in general after the um, we open, or um, if that's still uncertain. I know, and and I don't know where the public health offices are going to be. Yeah, I I think that those things are still in play, Rosemary. But I think. My approach has been that even if we don't have a final plan for the full use of all the square footage in the interim, that would serve our folks well, because there's a very wide hallway there that, you know, you could gather people for, you know, the, the, uh, the book club or even exercise. There's enough space, enough width that we could be doing some classes there. So um, I don't want to have the lack of a final plan and moving people in reconstructing spaces to stand in the way of being able to bring people together because I think that that's a public health imperative mm -hmm. to let seniors socialize and see each other in a safe way and begin to interact. There are many people for whom um, this kind of format of Zoom or internet access is, is either not productive, they're not willing, and are they're not able. And so I, I, you know, it's a priority to bring people back together in person. And I will reflect that certainly statewide, this is a conversation, you know, where we are on chat lines daily, senior centers across the Commonwealth and looking at ways. And I think that this mix of starting off with a hybrid soft approach is the, gonna be the trend that we'll be seeing statewide. So outdoor programming, possibly some indoor in small finite ways, and then also, continuing some Zoom you know, activities and events for those who, who don't feel comfortable because there's gonna be people throughout that continuum of um, hesitancy. So, Thank you. yeah. And Thanks. Mila. Mila, I see. Oh, yeah, I have to unmute myself. <laughs> yes. yes, okay. Quick question. Do we have any time frame when we might start some of these activities, whether it's outside or inside? And are we going to be doing it slowly, one activity at a time, or just have a big opening? 
<laughs> I don't think we're going to have a big opening yet. I okay. think we'll eventually have a big opening. Um, you know, I'd love to do a ribbon cutting because folks have not seen how the place has been remodeled. And I think that that's going to be further down the line. I think that that's kind of probably more of a fall event or September, mm -hmm. something around that. But in the meantime, in terms of outdoor, um, I have to, the two things I need to do the outdoor is I need the Board of Health to approve it. And then I need teachers willing to do it. So as soon as the weather reaches that point where the, some of the teachers who've expressed interest feel comfortable that they could deliver that, you know, in a, in a way that they could count on weekly, um, we would be doing that. I think that there will be several activities that will be outdoors at least. Um, you know, I know myself as a teacher, I did it all through the fall. We were even wearing coats outside and doing yoga down at the park. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think you'll have several opportunities that will be outdoors. And I, and I think there is a possibility of some small indoor gatherings. Okay, thank you. Wonderful, I see another hand, uh, Yvette, um, would you unmute yourself? Yes, thank you. Um, I was uh, wondering about the space behind the bank center. Is that where you envision that maybe tents would be out there? behind the bank center? Yeah, no, the property behind us is actually not owned by the town. It's owned by the Clark House, which is oh. a private company. And so I I would, I, I, I don't believe that I'll necessarily get their, um, their approval uh, just because of liability of holding a town activity on yeah. their lawn. But we have also, what, what I have been, discussing uh, with facilities management is, is setting up tents uh, in other locations in town. So places in North Amherst and South Amherst, because that has been a long mm -hmm. desire of mine is to do programming also out in the community, um, yeah. places that people have not been able to access us. So that also might be a possibility. So I think everything is on the table, but I don't think that that would necessarily be a location that, that we'll be able to um, use because I, I I do agree with you. I love that space. I always imagine myself in that space, but um, we've been through the maps and and we don't own it. Um, and they have been reluctant to um, to have more public events on it when I've been in discussions with them previously. Okay, thank you, Pat and Mary Beth. And Yvette, I am looking for some flat surfaces for Zumba. So. <laughs> Kendrick Park, is that on the table? Yeah, it, it, everything is on the table. It's not, um, th there are a number of locations, a number of facilities. And I and, and also, uh, you know, I have to have uh, teachers who are willing to go to those, those locations and find that those locations have a surface or a space or an area that will suit what they're doing. And I'll just explain what I mean by that. For yoga, uh, we were going down to the Mill River Park and we, we tried several different times. And, and at that same time, there were gatherings of school children um, who were also there, you know, using the park. And that, that made it impossible to do like yoga and meditation because we had, you know, like lots of people running around and, you know, it, um, so we have to, we have to, there's a number of details that we just need to be looking at. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see um, next, uh, uh, Chad's hand, followed by uh, Jacqueline. Go ahead, Chad. Yeah, just back to Mila's uh, question. Is there any hard timeline on that? No, there is not a hard timeline because I have to wait for the state to articulate a policy and then this, the Board of Health would make some local rules around it. So the CDC guidance, like I said, has not been adopted. So there, has, there is no change in the status of the safety uh, prescriptions that are in effect in Massachusetts for gathering. And until that happens and it trickles down to the local level. So, and right. in terms of outdoor right now, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't attempt anything outdoor right now because the weather continues to vary. And I, I know from working with seniors outdoors that like right now, it would be inclement weather and it would be off and on. So we wanna to get to a window of weather where we're looking at some consistent warmth because the teachers don't wanna do 
oh, there's a week here, but then we have to skip a week because it got cold again or there's snow or there's, you know. So I think we have to wait for a bit of a shift, both policy-wise and also weather-wise and, and teachers willing to do that. Next, Jacqueline. I think I, I really like this idea, the hybrid in more ways than one, hybrid in terms of indoor, outdoor, and hybrid in terms of central activities and neighborhood-based activities. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the neighborhood-based uh, might in fact provide uh, an increased likelihood, I don't know for a fact, but it seems to me a model that would provide increased access to people who might be slow to participate in things that are, are in center of town. Um, I'm not sure what it's going to entail in making the plans, but I really think that's a good idea and a good model. Thanks, Jacqueline. And I also would look to if the COA and both, you know, your networks and friends, if anyone has uh, recommendations around places or pockets, places that we could set things up, please forward me that information so we can bring that to the okay. full table. Okay. Um, Cause I rely on you and your, and your friends and connections about where would be a fruitful location, not just based on our social work services or something like that. So please. Okay. And please. just echo echoing that I, um, programming too, like what sorts of programming, mm -hmm. there may be customized programming uh, that meets um, expressed needs for interaction in specific neighborhoods um, and locations. So, uh, that would be, um, I think that that's another dimension of that. I see Rosemary's uh, hand and want to recognize her. Yeah, very briefly. I see the South Amherst Common as an ideal yes. spot yes. for activity. Yes. I yes. have a hard time envisioning what you would use in North Amherst. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, was think, I was thinking too of the South Amherst Library and I hadn't thought about the Common, but yes, because I, I know that there's a, a, a space in there that's used for voting uh, as a, a, a voting precinct. Mm -hmm. um, and I would imagine that there are other places this, depending on the size of the groups that are coming together. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Caroline. Um, I'm just curious about the uh, Hickory Ridge Golf Course space and what's happening with that. And because um, I live right across the street from there, there's plenty of parking and I know they have a big open space in there, but I don't know what's happening with it. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary Beth, do you have a um, any insider information about that? No, no, but but I, I certainly will follow it up and I will get back to Caroline. Uh-huh. Okay. And Mila? Yeah, I like the idea of getting together in a certain place, but are there other activities where uh, meeting virtually could be a possibility in the meantime? Yes, and that, that's why I think when I mentioned the hybrid, we intend oh, okay. to keep all three of those facets you know, going forward. So there are people for whom gathering in person is going to be prohibitive for another a number of reasons, right? Yeah. It might be that they are homebound. It might be that they are just hesitant. You know, it, that's an increasing yeah. conversation that we're having with yeah. individuals now that they're vaccinated is a folk saying that they are nervous uh, about re-entering. There's yeah. this process of re-engaging having been sheltered for a year that I think that we can't skip over of helping people to feel safe um, and, and doing it in a titrated manner. So when you ask about like a big opening versus doing this in a small progressive way that helps people to gain uh, a, a sense of agency again, that helps them to understand spaciousness and expansiveness in a way that meets them what, where they're at, I think it's gonna be one of our challenges and, and, and the role that we're here to serve. Okay. So we'll continue Zoom, Mila. Yeah, because I belong to a singing class and we never stop. We can't, 
we could not meet, but every week we get together like this and everybody takes their turn to sing their songs. <laughs> <laughs> we, we couldn't get accompanied by our singing coach, but we sing and mm -hmm. it's, it's very, it's all, it's very satisfying just to meet mm -hmm. in code, even if it's virtually. We may, I miss everybody. <laughs> I like to think of this group as it, it, it's uh, expressing its own form of song and metal, melody and harmony, <laughs> harmony and even dissonance from time to time, which adds a little interest and spice to things. Um, let's see. This is a good time, I think, just to transition to um, Mary Beth's update and looking ahead. And uh, so we'll move that uh, on to the next uh, to item B in our agenda. Go ahead. Mary Beth. So um, I did prepare a written report for Pat, and I didn't know if you've had the opportunity to distribute that more widely or I not. I did not. I didn't. So, okay. So um, <laughs> you, will, you will receive a, a written report uh, as part of your packet. But uh, a couple of quick announcements is that we were, um, the Bank Center received a $192,600 grant from the Department of Transportation's Winter Shared Streets and Spaces program. And as you recall, um, yes. the COA was a very big part of this. And I just wanna take a moment to congratulate you for your advocacy and your partnership, both with me and the town in this endeavor. Um, I, you know, if um, you recall, I had shared uh, the webinar about this grant with Pat and a number of individuals, we all attended it. We brainstormed about it. We talked about walking and how that's so critical both to exercise for mental health and for physical health. Um, and we approached the planning department to say, uh, you know, we learned through that webinar that there were actually extra points awarded for a senior project. And so had it not been for the support uh, and advocacy and input of the COA, I have to say that that this probably wouldn't have taken on as much life. So I want to thank Pat and all of you for your support and encouragement um, in this endeavor, because I think that we're, what we're doing through this grant is we're addressing some long languishing issues that have been just sort of overlooked and it keeps kind of going to the bottom of the punchline. So it was, it was really joyful to have this success. So what it will be going towards is, um, you know, the, that terrible set of stairs that lead from the Musanti up to the Bangs. Uh, not only do people access the health center, but also individuals who live at Clark and Ann Whalen use that as their main thoroughfare pathway. Though it's the hardest pathway, it's the most direct route. So people go up and down it every day to get to CVS, to businesses on North Pleasant Street. So those uh, stairs will be, re will be addressed. They're cracking. I, you know, twice this past year, I have found seniors who have tumbled off to the side and, and have had to be removed via ambulance. So it has been a tremendous um, priority. And, and, you know, and I would also hasten back to Rosemary and her work around advocacy that she uh, engaged in about the safety of this immediate area and how that impacts seniors who do come here for a number of reasons, not just the senior center. So those stairs will be addressed, which is tremendous, both the pitch and the construction of them. And there will be a pathway now that will lead sort of, if you think of it as an L shape from the area of the parking lot uh, by Johnny's, like where the um, overhang is for handicap parking. So coming through there straight towards Clark House and then bending down towards uh, the Musanti Center. So it will be sloped, it will be ADA compliant. There will also be seating halfway, which has been a, another big, uh, I don't know, it's been a point of contention for me because folks who come for lunch every day, they climb up the stairs and they sit on the, um, the barrier there that holds back the trees because they're winded. So because of the incline coming uphill, I really wanted some, some seating just to, to help people. So that's one. Two is the crosswalk, which if you think of it, if you were looking out of the large activity room, that small crosswalk that leads to sort of a pathway, again, that leads up to North Pleasant Street, we see on a daily basis, people almost getting clipped um, who are coming down and especially if they're in a wheelchair, they're coming down at a higher rate of speed. They can't see anybody or cars approaching to the left-hand side and vehicles who, that are exiting the parking garage or that parking lot don't see them. So that will be addressed with enhanced safety 
improvement and awareness that there's a crosswalk and this is a main thoroughfare both for vehicles and also for pedestrians and those in wheelchairs. And then the, the third part is uh, working with Ben Breger from the town planning department who came to the COA meeting and shared this with you. Um, we're gonna be looking at some downtown walking routes and some wayfinding signs so that there would be, uh, you know, like if you wanna walk for a quarter of a mile, a third of a mile, one mile, there will be some routes that would be demarcated in the downtown area because there are there are literally you know hundreds of people who live in this immediate area, and they do do a lot of walking. So it'd be it'll just be a pleasant uh, in, engagement for them. Secondly, the Hampshire Regional Vaccine Clinic, which is now operating at the Bang Center, continues to operate for those individuals, as you well know, 65 and older. We have uh, been engaged in efforts to reach out to individuals who are historically marginalized to address health equity in the distribution of the vaccine. One of those was uh, we worked to create and designate a clinic day for the housing authority. And uh, so we had about 48 hours to pull that together and we prepared. Uh, I, Jennifer, and, and I have to say that, that my uh, staff is amazing. Jennifer Reynolds and Helen McMillan, they flew into action in 48 hours. We prepared flyers in Spanish, Chinese, and English. We hung them up at the three locations, Jean Elder, Chestnut Court, and, and all of the floors for Ann Whalen. Uh, I've worked with the uh, housing authority to get a master list of all residents at those locations. We called every single person who was residing. And if we weren't able to reach them, what we tried to do is we were working with their family system because using our database, we often we know, we know these folks, we serve them on a daily basis, whether it's Meals on Wheels, et cetera. So we worked with families, with PCAs. We had an amazing turnout of family members, PCAs who came in unpaid to bring individuals over here uh, to get vaccinated. Individuals with significant behavioral health issues, we were able to support again because we know them and work with them. We went and got them that Saturday morning. Jennifer came in, we walked over to Ann Whalen and she was just, phenomenal in terms of the outreach and getting folks here. So that was, um, you know, they, they, they went the extra mile. They were calling even Saturday morning up till 8 a.m. So kudos to like incredible exemplary work and dedication. Uh, and, and we continued to, as supply will let us to continue to, to engage in those efforts. Um, vaccination of the homebound is underway. So though the system for the rollout, I think everybody would agree was, is abysmal um, and, and frankly, in many ways was heedless. What I would suggest is that there, there were areas, open lanes that we could find success and homebound was one of those. So that was something we could control. And so we, again, like there are certain things I can't mediate, but the homebound we could. So we worked hard, we created our homebound list, both through our Meals on Wheels and also through our engagement of social work services. I also contacted Highland Valley Elder Services and they were wonderful. Though they couldn't identify for me uh, due to HIPAA and, and other confidentiality agreements, all of the Amherst residents who received any service through them, what they agreed to do is I prepared again, the multilingual flyer and they shared that through all of their contracted providers, anyone in Amherst who was receiving a service to say, are you homebound? Do you need a vaccine? Call the senior center. So uh, Tim Nelson and Emma Dragon put together an amazing team um, of individuals, professionals who have gone out. They uh, not only are doing Amherst, but they're doing other communities. I think as of this week, there are over 60 individuals who have been vaccinated. Wow. We are not complete with our Amherst group, but we are well under our way, including an individual who's 100 years old who had been released from a rehab and was unable to leave her home to get that second dose. So, you know, the, the comments and the phone calls I've been receiving from those individuals who are homebound are just, it's, uh, it's, it's so very touching. And they, and they talk about how great the town of Amherst uh, staff is led by Tim Nelson and Emma Dragon. Um, we also, I, I, about the, the issue of onboarding people for appointments, um, the system, as, as you all well know, has changed rapidly and usually without any notice. And rather than um, increasing access, it has been limiting access. The most recent change two weeks ago by the governor of the regional clinic that we were uh, operating, we were no longer uh, given the ability to locally enroll people. So it used to be when we had our clinic that we had our, a link 
and people could call us and I could enroll 50 people a day. That stopped with this regional piece where all of the links had to be public and through VaxFinder. So we were in line with all of you. The first day that it happened when I got in line to try to get folks in, there were 120,000 people in front of me. So we were stymied as well as you all. Since that point in time, uh, Jennifer Reynolds, again, a, an outstanding superstar, um, has put together a team of volunteers. Um, and that team of volunteers has, in the last two weeks, gotten in over 200 people to appointments. So, and they, they have a variety of tricks and tools and tips. Um, they are online uh, you know, at midnight, they are on at one in the morning, they are on at five in the morning. Um, you know, the, these appointments get dumped online at odd hours. And the only way you can catch them is this, this constant like hypervigilance and that's what they've been able to do. So individuals who are calling us, we are doing a prioritization working, I'm still working with 80 year olds in town. Um, and we've, we've, we are working our way down uh, through those lists. So we maintain our own lists um, of high needs folks, prioritizing by age, prioritizing by lack of technology, and then other, other factors. But we are making some headway and that's, a, again, though the lanes are closed, we're trying to find those areas we can still succeed. The AARP tax program is underway with the Hadley Senior Center, thanks to the, the generosity and the partnership and good relationship we have with Hadley Senior Center and their director, Haley Wood. And then the last thing, I, and it's, it's hardly the last thing, it's really my first thing is I wanted to introduce to you and she's online um, is, our social work intern, Marina Santiago. So she has joined our staff and she'll be with us for a number of months. She's in an MSW program at Springfield College. And I wanted her just to be able to say hello, introduce herself. And um, I will tell you, she is such a bright light when she comes in in the morning. It's fabulous having her. Um, and uh, go ahead, Marina. Thank you, Mary Beth. It's wonderful to see you all. Um, like Mary Beth said, I'm a, a social work graduate student at Springfield College. I'm in my second semester. And um, I was born and raised in Amherst. And um, I just moved back. I lived in Chicago for 13 years and I moved back last summer. And um, yeah, I, I'm so fortunate to have this opportunity to work with Mary Beth at the Amherst Senior Center. I just started maybe a month ago. Um, and it's, it's just been a great opportunity and there's a lot to take in, but um, I'm getting there slowly, getting the hang of it. So thank you for um, allowing me to, to be here and to, to listen and learn with all of you. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So I'm seeing uh, smiles, uh, hands shaking, waving, uh, thumbs up, uh, various things uh, of uh, uh, appreciations and excitement that we uh, share um, and, and to welcome you. Uh, it's, uh, it's really marvelous. I want to, I want to also just, uh, I want to recognize um, that, uh, that Dick, Yorga has joined us uh, from um, friends of Amherst Senior Center. Dick, uh, we're glad that you've joined us this morning. And um, he, um, I've asked that he join us uh, at all our monthly meetings uh, or at least some representative of friends uh, to our meetings. So um, that's, that'll be a good thing. Um, and I also, um, I just think on behalf of all of us to Mary Beth and her staff, we, you've taken our breath away, uh, your commitment, the dedication has far exceeded uh, uh, expectations and uh, the just the resourcefulness and support and um, imagination that you've brought to um, our, our town during this time of uh, uh, enormous uh, uh, grief and uh, bewilderment and fear. Um, your steadfastness and your um, energy has really made an enormous difference in so many lives. And um, so I just want to just say that on behalf of all, all of us and, um, and just uh, words aren't 
enough. And so you're going to keep hearing that from us. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, any 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 comments or questions for Mary Beth? I see uh, Rosemary. I think I also saw Jacqueline as well. Uh, um, go ahead, Rosemary. Yes, I just wanted to um, say I couldn't have said it better. Mary Beth has been just beyond belief in the work that she does and the way she helps people. But I wanted to add something about the walking program. I'm so delighted with the improvements that are being made in the uh, area, the crosswalk, which not only was not good visibly from the large activity room, it was also crumbled. And I had sent several pictures to click fix mm -hmm. a year or more ago. And so finally it is be becoming a reality. In addition, I'd like to say, I'd like to look into some walking routes in South Amherst. And I'm wondering if um, that is a possibility for uh, people who live in the South Amherst area, if we could develop some walking routes for those people. Um, Jacqueline might be interested and I think Karen Raynan expressed an interest in that. So um, we'll look into that. And if you have anything else to offer or add, let me know. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that anything that we can do to support people both gathering safely and also getting exercise is really critical and is a high priority for us. This particular grant is focused on, on downtown areas. So that's in large part why it was focused to that. But um, I know that Pat has been working with a number of individuals who are uh, uh, keen walkers and also the, um, the individual Jean Valentine who has the hiking and the walking routes. Those are mostly in, uh, you know, in uh, wooded areas, but we do have that online on our website now. She's just compiled it together and we're going to be creating a pamphlet that people can pick up here uh, to take with them. And um, so I would love to, to continue and, and, and maybe as part of a subcommittee or whatnot, finding ways to enhance the walking and working together with the town because it, it really was, you know, a really nice symbiotic relationship that just came together at the right time. And I agree. Jacqueline? Yes, um, I, I want to echo uh, the commentary uh, for Mary Beth and for the committee uh, bringing, you know, I, I see uh, um, what's happening is uh, very much like what's happening in some faith-based communities, going outside the walls, the local walls and into the community. The community center is a hub, but it is not the place where the real work is. It's creating a sense of community and connecting people. And this is, I think, a great happening. I think it's a great happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and thanks to the leadership as well as the, the, the leaders in the segment of the organization. All right, thank you, Jacqueline. I see the energy uh, great. Chad, is your hand up? Yes, um, speaking of South Amherst, um, I wanna echo Jacqueline's uh, comment. Um, Center City is where all the resources are. Um, if you go to South Amherst, North Amherst, East Amherst, some of the other village centers, there's no sidewalks. Um, we have uh, more uh, land in easements to uh, parks and recreation uh, than almost any town. One third of our, our town is in these types of um, set-asides. So there's plenty of recreation area, but when you talk of um, the three tiers of the elderly, the young elderly, the middle age, and the, and the older age. So the last two segments really can't walk in those types of places. And since we have no sidewalks, um, Amherst is very deficient in that. Um, you can get around downtown some, uh, but uh, if you can't walk in Mill River, um, you know, it's tough. Um, you ask where, where are you going to have... Um, these soft openings around and about town, no river would be great. Um, it's got parking and uh, gazebos and all that, but the ground is uneven. 
Uh, Groff Park is for South Amherst, just as the common is. It's pretty tough to walk for some folks. There's hundreds of miles of, of trails in Amherst. Um, but I've had people in our groups drop out because they can't go across the uneven ground. So there's two aspects to uh, age-friendly communities. Uh, most of us have focused on the social, emotional uh, health issues. The second big category is the built environment and Amherst really does not, um, is not able to do that. It's an expense and that's, that's one reason, but also this segment of our population is left out of most people's minds. Yeah, that's true. I see Yvette's hand. Yvette? Yes. Um, uh, I just wanted to uh, also say that I think Mary Beth is excellent and I love her, her work and commitment. And I think for me, it brings up the subcommittees, which we will get to because I just want to know how we work with Mary Beth or, you know, what is that relationship? Does she advise us? Can we be her team? I mean, that's all unclear to me. Uh, and I just wanted to make note of that. Thank you. That's wonderful. Uh, we've got a crowd of deep thinkers, I can tell that. And, uh, uh, and I appreciate that. Um, so uh, let me just, uh, um, amend, uh, just to add in the, or transition to the senior walking, what I can share with you, just, an, um, just my own update um, is um, I did do uh, reach out to um, Ben Bragman and, um, and um, Leanne Taylor um, um, following up on our last meeting. And um, I want to say that um, we have um, certainly, ha there's great energy in our town around this issue of, um, of, fun, uh, 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 the issue of age and dementia friendly projects, including walking and bicycling as well. And um, um, we're just beginning to scratch the surface of uh, looking for uh, funding uh, from a variety, of, and, and I'm convinced that there are fun funds. But one uh, thing that uh, Leanne said and uh, um, uh, has urged us to do is to connect with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and um, um, in, in our efforts uh, that, uh, that to seek resources and also engage in, uh, in identifying um, um, resources uh, that serve all members of our community. Um, and so uh, I'm excited by that. That has not yet begun, but um, that is a connection that we have to, uh, we need to make. And so if that's a, an interest of yours as a member of the council, um, um, it doesn't need to, I don't need to be the only one reaching out in some ways that, that uh, we can certainly possibly do that through our committee structure, through the well-being committee, for example. Um, and I know that there's, there's a lot of specific uh, neighborhood-based uh, interest, or there could be. Uh, I just scratched the surface in my own uh, uh, living community at Greenleaves, and there are just the enthusiasm that has been expressed is just mind blowing. So I know that this is a strong interest among seniors for safe uh, uh, walking, for the sociability, for the health reasons and so forth. So um, I think the sky's the, the limit. Uh, uh, there is no limit uh, for what we can do, uh, but it will require some organizing, some planning, some specific goals, and so forth. And I think that, that that's going to be, that will be possible, and it'll be easier as things open up for sure. Uh, but the energy's there, and we, we're trying to po poise ourselves um, our, our, um, in our committee structure, um, and, in a venues, identifying venues, um, and developing programs and people. Um, I think of myself sometimes as a talent scouter. Uh, I want you all to be talent scouters for uh, citizens with energy and ex that same energy and excitement and imagination for making these projects become a reality. So um, um, 
so we are going to take some next steps with that. Uh, we don't need to be limited just to you know winter time uh, and uh, and to COVID related. We're we're getting beyond that. So um, I think that there are there there are all kinds of possibilities that lie ahead, and um, so we're going to. Uh, we're planning to take some more steps in that direction. Um, and and I, 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 should, I wanna also add that July is the time when uh, specific age and dementia friendly projects is going to be, um, are going to be addressed, I think, systematically. Uh, some surveys are being done and contemplated, developed, I'm sure, uh, even as we speak. Um, and uh, by the uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, and um, so um, things are percolating uh, at the moment. And, uh, but, uh, you know, a, ga a data gathering uh, will be happening. And um, so um, I think many of us are like a horse at the gate. We can't wait to get started. We can't wait to connect. We can't wait to, um, to be together to, uh, to do some uh, real serious organizing and outreach. And that's a good thing. So I would say, you know, <laughs> uh, keep, uh, keep thinking and imagining and, uh, um, and, and, and help us identify uh, the, the people um, in our town uh, who, who have the energy and the imagination to uh, join with us. I think that that's, whole, that, that, that's why uh, we've spent so much time on, on developing our structure. And I will say that there are, fr frankly, it's messy. There are unanswered questions. Uh, there's sometimes of discomfort, that's okay. Those are growing ages, uh, growing um, edges that will help us move forward. Uh, but we're having real conversations, honest conversations as we move forward together. And I could not be more excited about um, the deepening of our relationships with each other and, and others in our community. Um, that brings us to the next item on our agenda, it, uh, Highland Valley um, Elder Services. And um, again, I, um, um, as I work, uh, work in partnership with Mary Beth and also in partnership with our house representative, a representative, I mean, with our, uh, our colleague uh, with deep experience in Amherst, Norma Halleck. We both serve um, uh, uh, on the, uh, the board of Highland Valley um, Elder Services, which uh, distributes about $10 million worth of services to elders in, in this region. Um, and um, so um, although, um, Valerie De, De, uh, Desquito was not uh, able to join us uh, today. The reason I wanted to speak about this a bit was that, and to share with you uh, the kinds of questions I was asking, um, and actually Mary Beth and I sort of put our heads together to figure out what would be, what would be good questions. Uh, uh, dr drilling down, what does our staff need to know about, um, a, a couple of things in depth that we think uh, of, are of particular interest to uh, 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 Amherst citizens. And one of them was uh, Meals on Wheels. Um, and the other was um, uh, the long wait time. I think at a previous um, um, ACOA meeting, uh, we had a person from, um, uh, from um, Highland Valley uh, tell us that seniors have a very long wait time. Uh, perhaps they've returned from a hospital. They need immediate, they need services right away, but they're on a wait list. And we, we, we and they, there were um, Highland Valley contractors were having difficulty persuading uh, care providers to cross the river into Amherst uh, to provide services. That's a, that's, that is such a core need. So we wanted to ask about that. And, um, you know, and then finally, um, we're, we're curious about um, in the interest of 
maximizing that the the, uh, the services that um, that can be provided to um, qualified Amherst citizens. What are the what's the intake procedure like? Sometimes family members or individuals. Uh, Seniors will themselves, if they're able, they will come to the cent, a senior center for the first time and say, um, you know, um, my loved, either my loved one cannot, you know, make meals for herself, or my loved one um, needs to get to doctor's appointments and can't do it. So there are intake procedures. Uh, uh, so, so there are various ways that citizens access services and various forms of intake. And so we need to get some clarity about what that, what those it are and how we can best advocate for the seniors in our own town to get the services that they qualify for and deserve to, to receive. So um, we put together a set of, of questions uh, for her when she comes. And uh, she's agreed she'll be here next week, ne next month, um, in April to chat with us at some length. Um, so I'm going, I'm uh, inviting you uh, to share, uh, you know, uh, along those those topics, um, any questions that you might have. And uh, we started to formulate some uh, for her, but um, I hope there'll be a robust give and take. Uh, when she attends our meeting. Um, and I, I'm wondering, do you, is there anything, uh, Norma, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Just uh, in terms of, um, um, you know, th that encounter? No, well, when the person came, I don't remember what her position was, whether she was a medical assistant or what, but she said parking was a problem and that goes back to it's a problem for a lot of things, medical appointments, and whatever. But I didn't know if, um, I didn't realize Clark House was totally so independent from the group. I think of the two apartments, as, you know, senior mm -hmm. citizens, but, um, and so I think that was part of it because I don't know if they didn't get reimbursed for their mileage or, whatever but they felt it was expensive to come over here and mm -hmm. that was that was one issue but of sure. many, but i don't know all the ins and outs there's so many committees but um i wondered if we had that packet um that brochure that was just i may have it here um this one services and resources do we have that on our, no? I don't know. Seen that before? Okay, I will get more of them from Highland Valley and because I think it would be good for all the committee members to have that in their packet. At least it gives a bigger overall what they, um, you know, do. So, oops, okay. Uh, so, okay. okay, so that's all I have to say. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Norma. Um, yeah, I think that that's uh, we that's absolutely a question that we should follow up in uh, on um, as uh, um, when when Valor meets with us. Um, so we can add, certainly add that to our list, and and um, because uh, I don't know what if any action has uh, around that issue has taken place in the past year. Yeah. Um, and so we can check into that. Um, okay, any, any yeah. other, um, so I would, if you haven't yet had a chance to look carefully at um, these uh, two post-pandemic planning questions um, for Emma and for uh, Valerie, I, I would ask you to take a good look at those because, um, and if you have your, you know, your own questions, uh, uh, to uh, to formulate, uh, let's make the best use of our time uh, with them. Um, I want to recognize Chad has Chad Fuller has his hand up. I see that and Yvette as well. So go ahead, Chad. You're muted, Chad. Not a turn here. Um, but, uh, one of the members of the audience is with this uh, Amherst neighbors. 
they have trained a cadre of volunteer uh, outreach uh, people. Um, nothing to do with providing medical service or any of that but people of contact uh, in the community to receive, that could receive these people that you mentioned coming, returning home and so forth. In our efforts as a COA to be more involved in the community, um, you know, I'm thinking that uh, the system that they have up and running might be of use. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't see Caroline now, she must have dropped out, but uh, she's their president and that would be a great that might be a great uh, connection. Thanks for adding that. Um, I, I agree. And uh, Caroline and I uh, have been uh, struggling uh, mightily to find a, a mutually agreeable uh, time and place to, to chat. But, but we will definitely follow up on that because uh, I would agree with you. Uh, we, need, we need to be uh, fully mindful of um, uh, what might be what, what, how we could partner more effectively together. So I totally agree. Uh, did I see, uh, Yvette, did I see your hand up? Okay. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to comment about the uh, Highland Valley and uh, how Clark House is independent. Um, and I have seen caretakers there when visiting friends. And so I would be interested to know about the parking problem. How many years ago is that parking problem uh, referring to? And I wondered how Clark House uh, handles, what kind of system they have for, for their caretakers because people still have to park, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. So uh, that's all I wanted to say. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Well be sure to formulate that question uh, for, for Valerie because it's it's uh, if that continues to be I, th these are not this is not rocket science I'm, I'm sure that we can figure out some solutions to these problems uh, because we don't you know we want to remove obstacles to care um, and 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 stay on it um, so um, uh, We'll, we're, we're counting on hearing your voice on that question uh, next month, Yvette. <laughs> and so that's a great, uh, great suggestion. Um, okay, um, let's say moving on. Um, uh, you, everyone should have received the uh, fourth draft of the ACOA proposed committee structure revision. <laughs> And it looks to me like, um, and I wanna say a special thanks uh, to the great uh, work that Rosemary stepped forward to do. Um, and uh, uh, I think it sounds to me, I wanna just also add uh, that I did, um, that um, I did yesterday receive a call from uh, ACOA board member, uh, council member, um, um, Greg Bascom, who is at a dental appointment this morning, but uh, he, he said that uh, he generally, uh, he, he was generally pleased with the, uh, this result. And I'm, so I'm just sharing with the, our, our draft as it stands. Um, he did uh, mention that uh, he drew my attention. He had a question about uh, the, uh, under the charge of the um, of the equity and inclusion committee uh, that uh, he, he asked a question about um, the, the word ensure that activities programs and services he wanted to know what ensure meant so um, I mean it with in, in a more practical way and so um, and what uh, so, and I mean, I responded, I, that, that was my word <laughs> when, when drafting it. And what I meant by ensure was that, um, especially around uh, this, uh, we're not a ju judicial group, there's no, you know, regul you know re regulators, but what, what that means is that, um, that um, it is very easy 
for any institution to become what be, to become um, um, unaware of the the sort of the sea we we swim in. That is. Uh, until Mary Beth Ritwitz began to raise questions when she joined uh, uh, as our director about who is at the table and who is missing. That question, uh, I had been with the council for, um, I had been with this, uh, se senior services and as a volunteer for a few years. And that was the, uh, at least for me, that was the first time I heard that question. That's always been a meaningful question for me throughout my whole life. Who's at the table and who's missing? So part of that business about ensuring is that there is a kind of an intention and purpose and consciousness about outreach. And I think that uh, I, I feel that I, uh, uh, the, your own energy and your own values come through um, positively in that regard. And so uh, now we write these charges, not only for uh, the, the, the constellation of council members right now, but for the future as well, um, that we, we want these public services that are provided to be for all people. Um, and that we always wanna be asking who, you know, how can we remove obstacles of access? How can we make the public services and, and opportunities and growth experiences and um, um, accessible for all people? Um, I, heard, uh, I heard Mila speak about, um, and, and Jacqueline speak about, and Chad speak about services in communities. Um, I've, I've heard all of you speak about, uh, accessibility, physical accessibility, uh, accessibility by, uh, you know, removing chunks of sidewalk that people <laughs> trip on. Uh, those, so that theme, I think, that's what I mean by insure. That's my vision. And so I, I wanted to be able to encapsulate that, um, not only for this council, but for future, for the activities in the future. So, um, um, that's the explanation that I gave to, to, um, to Greg. And um, so I guess what I would, what I'm asking now for um, with respect to this um, is uh, a motion uh, uh, from um, people to approve this document or um, I think I'm doing this right. Um, and then um, a second, and then we can discuss. Um. Jacqueline. Jacqueline. I move that the proposed committees, committee structure be uh, accepted by the group. Do I hear a second? I second that. Yvette, thank yep. you. Um, okay, is any, um, any discussion? Um, okay, lots of discussion. Okay, uh, let's see, I think I saw uh, Rosemary's hand first and then Tim. Uh, we, ca we can't hear you, uh, Rosemary. Rosemary, can you unmute yourself? Okay. Um, I'm not sure what you're approving because you sent a document that has a lot of changes in it. Are you, for instance, the very last statement on that document is a whole um, bullet point that is totally changed. Are you approving that total change? to the second bullet point under equity and inclusion. I think it's still unclear. There, there, a lot of these things are in red. Would you like me to share the screen with this? Uh, sure, uh, actually uh, my intention um, was to um, integrate uh, your, those uh, include uh, in red, those things, those items that you added 
Okay. Okay. So that was my intention. And there's there's one more that um, so, someone called my attention to as well. Um, and you could share your screen. That would be that'd be helpful, actually. Okay. Let me put it up. Are you seeing it? Yes. Okay. Um, there's one place here that I had a concern about. I'm not seeing it right now. So go ahead. Someone else had a question. And okay, sure, well, Tim. I'll for this. Okay, Tim. Uh, we you need to unmute. We can't hear yeah. you. I got it. Okay, good. Thanks. There we go. Sorry, the unmute button changed when Rosemary's <laughs> screen appeared. So. Okay. Uh, this is actually good to keep the uh, uh, screen up. Um, <clears throat> Frankly, I'm a little uh, concerned about how this is going to come across because frankly, I'm a, an old white male and I still do not feel comfortable with the use of racism in this document. And I notice the latest still has the use of those phrases. Uh, I have maybe it's because of my background, but I have is when I read the words racism, I immediately have, uh, frankly, negative connotations, uh, perceptions, and so on. And maybe I'm old fashioned, but I just don't feel comfortable with that in the document. I think we can get at exactly what we want to by just rephrasing without having to use the words racism. And I tried my I just jotted down some ways to do that. But before I do that, I just wanted to raise that. I don't feel comfortable with uh, this document uh, with the uses of words racism, racism in the document. I just don't feel comfortable with that. So that's my initial comment. And if we want to have that discussion, that's fine. I have some my own suggestions in terms of how I would reword, but uh, wanted to open that up for discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, any other comments? Yes, um, I'm, I'm trying to get in, but I don't know what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> okay, uh, Jacqueline, I see you and then I see Yvette. So Jacqueline, you're, uh, go, go ahead. I, I can, I, I just want to comment on the comment and I can understand that as I think I might've said in one of our other groups, I don't know that as um, a part of working through the, an issue that has remained dormant, long dormant. And while I, I thoroughly respect and I do appreciate your honesty, um, I think that we are in a period in our life as a community and I underscore community where the painful part does come up and the question becomes that of how are we going to deal with it? Uh, will it be by uh, covering over it and, and convincing ourselves that it's too uncomfortable to deal with and waiting for it to emerge again in another painful way? Or are we going to take on the charge and walk through it? I think it's a question we have to ask whether we are, we consider ourselves those who are, who are oppressed or those who are part of the category of those who oppress. Um, and when we can confront it, when we can confront it as painful as it may be, we take steps to walk through it and not have to encounter it in that way again. 
we can't deny the reality and we can't stop the pain because for some of us, the pain is ever present and it is not called, but it is. But that doesn't make it go away. And when we work at it together, we can be on the road to quote recovery and reclaiming that sense of community. Are there any other comments? I do, I have to ask Jacqueline, um, are you, are, I tried to change that one statement, that bulleted, second bulleted statement. Are you uncomfortable with the way the possible changes without using the word racism? It essentially says the same thing. It, it, it's important to use the word. It's important to use the word because we either racism or white supremacy. And I think racism is a bit more palatable and still, it's still accurate. We, 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 have, we, have, we have enshrouded in order to make it more palatable over the decades and centuries those of us who are compassionate find it easier. Those of us who live it find it even more difficult. Many of us. And if we walk this journey together, the pain could be eased, in my opinion, for many of us. I won't say all of us because I don't know that it will ever be all. But the reality is some of us are called to suffer in silence and others we put in, 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 in print, in black and white. We put in the media in whatever form so that it isn't as painful. And it means that some of us must deal with the pain we encounter every day. And others can ignore it because it's too painful. Can I say something? Okay, I think, yeah, I'm recognized. I think I, I'm meaning to recognize you. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead, uh, Yvette. Um, I, uh... First of all, want to uh, say that I seconded the committee structure because it read so much, much better fluidly. And uh, I did have questions again about Mary Beth and how we work with her. Um, but regarding the subcommittees, um, uh, I'm just, grateful for Jacqueline and Tim because this came up the last time and Jacqueline said we have to use the word uh, and, and it was in the minutes and, um, and she said that very clearly again now. Uh, and so I'm concerned about, you know, our brothers like Tim and, uh, and you know, I just think is Tim, are you taking it personal? How do you feel that all these images or uh, isms come up for you when the word is used, racism? And so, and the second part of that question is, Mer uh, Pat mentioned last time that, you know, this is being dealt with, it's national reckoning. So we're seeing it and we can, as Jacqueline says, do walk together, you know, can we learn together uh, why people feel like they feel, including why Tim feels like he feels. And uh, it's such a great opportunity to, you know, really come together as family and not take it personal, but I could understand, I think as Jacqueline said, you know, where Tim is coming from, 
So, you know, I look at Tim as an older brother, maybe a, a brother, and I'm just very interested if he could um, talk about that. Thank you. Uh, okay, I would be happy to. Uh, for me, the, for example, looking at that second bullet on your screen right now, when it says develop a pre preliminary review of racism embedded in services, blah, 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 blah. My uh, read of that is that there is racism embedded in services. And uh, I'm not sure, frankly, uh, uh, the, I, I, I get uh, a feeling of, is that intentional? Is it unintentional? I see it more, frankly, negative. Uh, and I would think we can get at it. This, it, it just raises to me an uncomfortableness that maybe that's partly what Jacqueline was talking about. I don't know, but for me, it raises that uncomfortableness of, of intentions and how we as a committee and how things in this town are done and so on and so forth. Uh, I would say review services and so on uh, to explore whether in fact there are possibly embedded institutional attitudes or practices that might have a, 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 a impact on disproportionately adverse impact on people and so on and so forth without necessarily using the word racism. I just think this is, it's tough for me. It, I have throughout my life and, and um, careers and so forth, I sort of react to what I would call buzzword, buzzwords. Racism is a buzzword. Certainly white supremacy is a buzzword. Uh, you can pick a bunch of others that for many people, the first reaction is sort of hairs go up the, on the back of your neck and you wonder whether there's intention and so forth, you can get to the goals and so forth without having to use those words and phrases. And that's just maybe my background. Again, I come, I'm a privileged white male, I say that, <laughs> but that's how I react. So I don't know if that's helpful. And I just have a, a problem with a document like this, which is, our intention is to assure that there are, uh, our programs do not discriminate, are reflective of all individuals, regardless of their racial, ethnic backgrounds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, without necessarily starting out by assuming that in fact, the way we operate right now is racist. And I just have some issues with that. So I'll, I'll stop, but hopefully that was helpful in terms of uh, giving you some thoughts in terms of where I'm coming from. Thank you. I'm speaking as a, go ahead. Um, I'm speaking as a member of the council, not uh, just another council member. Um, and um, and I want to say that uh, because I I've been, been close to many uh, versions uh, of this draft, and um, and I I really think that. Um, and I want to just appreciate um, want to appreciate Tom's uh, uh, Tim's comments about um, this, um, and I think it's precisely because this uh, document this this document in fact does represent a shift in the way we talk about um, a um, the reasons for why some individuals have participated uh, fully uh, or less than fully um, in uh, the council, uh, in uh, senior activities and the kind of community that we're, we would want to, that we would aspire to have. Um, and, and, um, and how we treat each other even within um, Within our programs, within our exercise classes, within every you know everything that we do. So this basically, I think the the purpose of this is 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 does go beyond beyond uh, equity and fairness uh, to a a more uh, 
um, intentional and purposeful look at those uh, habits of thought and action and uh, frankly, aggression and, uh, um, and put downs and entitlement um, that are, that ins they constitute regardless of intention, uh, the impact, sometimes the impact is reflected by people walking with their feet. They, they excuse, they don't feel welcome. They excuse themselves, say, this is, this place is not for me. So that, um, I, I want to acknowledge that, that the purpose of that, of, you, of the use of the phrase um, racism is, is meant um, to um, reflect um, some of the, the, the concerns that are happening, not just uh, in, within the Council of Aging, not just in the national conversation, but in our own town. Uh, where um, various aspects of, um, our, of institutional racism um, are being uh, examined systematically and faced um, directly using the term racism um, um, so that the focus um, is an acknowledgement of practices in the, plat in the past that have been harmful uh, to our fellow citizens um, and to create. And I think that that's why this, that's why I proposed this new commit committee because hun for hundreds of years, uh, we have um, not, uh, we, we have sidestepped um, the conversation and, um, so I will be voting in favor of um, um, the, the, the spirit of the, a document um, above. I do think that there's room in it for, um, for in all the committees for council members to find a place uh, where, they could, uh, uh, that, where they could be engaged actively. Um, um, and um, I would also just echo Rosemary's comment uh, um, um, regarding, um, you know, is you know, let's in in in, a, in reality, we we would want to infuse all our committees and all our activities with a spirit of fairness and equity. I think that that we we, we that's one thing that we can all agree on. But this committee is boldly different. It does, it, it, it does invite us to uh, look um, in a focused um, a way at a problem that continues to impact um, the outcomes of, um, and, and disparities of our public services. So I will be voting um, in favor of this um, the, of this revision. May I just say something, please? Who's, who's, who's speaking? I can't, um... Mila. Oh, Mila, yes, of course. Yeah. Just yeah. a short comment following Tim's uh, feeling about the word racism in the minutes. Mm -hmm. And I understand how you feel because I feel the same way. Is there any way where we can use another word instead of racism like multicultural, intercultural, or something like that, that will replace that negative word of racism. It, that came up the, in our last meeting again. And uh, I just wondered whether it is possible to, it may, not, it may not sound exactly the same, but I'm trying to think of a more diplomatic word. Well. Tim, I agree with how you feel because I feel the same way. Even in the news, it just, uh, it happens to be my, my major in sociology is intercultural, uh, <laughs> intercultural studies. So I, I was going to suggest 
the term multicultural or intercultural. I'll think of other words in place of racism, but that's the way I feel right now. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Mina, the, the change to that statement does not use the word racism, it essentially says the same thing without using that word. If you look at that bulleted item on red on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, I see it, yes. So that that essentially says what, what you're asking without using the word racism. Okay. Okay, I see, uh, Jacqueline, um, uh, let, I, I do see your hand and let me just say, I'm looking, this is conversation that is too important to rush, in my opinion. And um, and we are our time is ended uh, for now, I believe. Um, and we have not um, uh, um, officially. We've got a few a, a cushion of a few minutes. Um, and um, I my sense is um, uh, to, speaking to um, Mila's point. Um, and, and to all of you, that if you are, if you think that there are some proposals for different language or, or you have more to say about this topic, uh, we can certainly uh, 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 move that this conversation, continue this conversation um, at our next meeting. Um, that's what I, I'm proposing to the rest to the rest of you. Um, and, um, and I appreciate that, um, you know, that, that people are bringing, uh, attempting to bring their, their best selves uh, to this conversation. So I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I pre I'm appreciating that. Um, um, and uh, I don't care if it takes forever for us to <laughs> work, this out, work this out. I'm confident that we can. Um, and still participate with integrity in the decision that we make. So um, I see, um, so let me just say a couple things Then I see lots of hands. I see four hands. Um, and uh, let's see, what, do, uh, what I wanna say is um, I just want, uh, just so things can move forward with respect to uh, Sue's needs for the minutes, <laughs> which I uh, honor and uh, as a sacred duty. Um, I want to, um, I think that we could probably achieve, we could probably vote for on the minutes so that she could move forward with that. Is that, um, Sue, could you speak up to that? Um, do, um, do you? Do you, do you need us to um, move the minutes or um, I'm just kind of trying to balance the multiple needs we have here to bring closure to this. Um, we could we could always, I, I'm, I guess my question to you, Sue, is uh, could we, uh, if we don't, if we're running, we are running out of time, uh, we could uh, approve two sets of minutes, I suppose, at our next meeting. Would that be agreeable to you, or do, do, yes, would you that, recommend that? That's fine with Pardon me. Sir? We already have a motion on the floor, so I yes. don't know how you deal with that. <clears throat> you can't put another motion on top of a, a motion that's already on the floor. So okay. the minutes can be dealt with next time. Okay, all right. Um, all right. Um, Help me out there for other parliamentarians. I, I, I move that we table the motion until uh, further meeting. That we pick up the, the, the current motion to um, accept the minutes. I second. I second. All okay. right. I, I need to say that I have some objections with those minutes. I, I'm trying to wrap my mind around. You're moving to accept, <laughs> accept them? I'm sorry, would you, could you repeat, uh, Chad, would you repeat what you just yes, said? I, I move that we table the motion on the, uh, that we uh, lay aside the motion on the table. Oh, okay, all right. Is there a second? I move. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Uh, any, any opposed? What are we tabling? I mean, 
What? I can restate it for the minutes. I move that we table the motion about accepting the new committee structure to a okay. next meeting. Okay. okay. All right. Do we need to re-vote on that? Is that, is that clear to everyone that we, we voted on? Okay, continuing the conversation. Yes, okay. absolutely. All right. I think you have to have a vote on the tabling. So in other words, okay. he's moved to have it tabled. You have a second of that motion, all in favor, yes or no. So okay. that that tabling motion passes. All right. Sorry okay. to chime in. All right. Okay. So do, so we voted. <laughs> I second that. I second the motion to move okay. table it to next time the subcommittee right. structures. Okay. All in favor? In favor. In All favor. opposed? Aye. 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 The motion's carried. Okay. All right. Um, Thanks, Pat. All righty. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for hanging in there. Um, I need a motion. Uh, um, I will. I can send announcements to you uh, separately. Um, that's not a, not an issue. Um, and you have the dates for the next COA meetings. I need a motion for adjournment. I oh, move to adjourn. Uh, uh, Tim, I see your hand though. Go ahead. No, sorry. I, one quickie uh, on your uh, on the agenda was the conflict of interest training. Yes. Just some clarification from from Mary Beth, maybe. Uh, some of us who were just officially appointed for either a second term or a certain term, like within the last year, uh, do we all, all still have to go through that conflict of interest training again? Yeah, that is my understanding is, so okay. I had a similar thing where I had done it with less than that window, but right. I think that they're trying to get everybody on the same um, sort of, uh, I don't know, cycle. Okay, so, they're asking so we have to do it again. Yeah. Yes. Okay, all yeah. right. Uh, I just did it last night. It took about 45 minutes. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's and, kind of a bear. Um, okay. okay. And um, I just I just wanted to chime in. I just checked in with Angela. Uh, you have the floor till 1050. Okay. And I just noted that Dorothy's had her hand up. Yes. Um, I, and I just uh, would like to bring that to your attention. I appreciate that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dorothy, we'd love to hear from you. Go ahead. I just want to say that your discussion around the word racism is actually one of the more civilized ones that I've sat in on and I felt it was very honest and I appreciated that. I just want to give an outside view, uh, which is very pragmatic. Uh, I'd say use the words that are useful, you know, that, that lead to useful conversation. And so I thought the substitute motion was very useful, examining your practices and finding out was that, is it consciously, unconsciously? Uh, because no examples were given. And so it's kind of like, you know, it's just up in the ether. So bring it down to real cases. Um, that's what, that was just my suggestion. But I, I really, I do applaud you. Um, it, it was one of the more honest conversations that I've heard. And I've heard a lot of conversations on the topic recently. So thank you. Right, we appreciate your uh, observations. And, and may, may I add that, that Dorothy um, is a former senior center director uh, she's from, from New York. Am I, is that correct, Dorothy? So I, I just want to make sure that people understand yeah. that you bring a lot to bear around not only the, the civic engagement, but senior centers. You know, it, that is true. And I actually forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> I was director of the Richard Older Adult Center um, many years ago in the, uh, probably 40 years ago, a long time ago. Oh. Um, but it was a community um, that had two very diverse groups in it. Um, and it was very interesting. It was very interesting trying to uh, bring them together. Um, there was Germans who really were from a very German community and there were Jews. So that was a challenge. Wow. And your, your uh, yeah. recovery is going very well. <laughs> so that, that's great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, thanks everyone. Uh, this is uh, this is an extraordinary group, and um, and so uh, feel free to um, uh, think uh, think practically about the language, uh, the suggestions that you've made, where where the tweaks need to happen, uh, and so that we can arrive at uh, 
a document, a, a document that, that is practical, that's useful, and that will take us where we want to go. Um, so, okay. Um, I need a, a motion for adjournment. I move we adjourn. Okay, and a second? I second. Okay. Um, um, and votes? Um, all in favor? Aye. Yes. Opposed? All right, we are adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.